I guess you'd call it an accidental theme. Uh, and some people are accidental tourists, but, but I, I've accidentally become famous in the state uh, as a butterfly expert. He has a PhD in electrical engineering and analyzes secret weapon systems for the Navy at Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. But in a parallel universe unknown to many of his colleagues, Richard H. Smith, Jr. is also Maryland's reigning expert on Lepidoptera. That's butterflies to the average Joe. Complexity. Exquisite beauty. The lure of the chase. It's been the equation for a lifelong passion that's metamorphed into scientific pursuit. When the Department of Natural Resources Natural Heritage Program launched Maryland's first rare butterfly survey ever, they naturally netted Dick Smith as a coordinating partner in the project. These have been trying years for researchers. Unfortunately, uh, one thing I'm finding is that uh, species that we thought were safe and that had been around for decades are no longer there. Uh, we, we have been, been to several sites and we have not been able to find them. Last year we had drought conditions. We thought maybe the drought was affecting uh, the populations, and, but this year uh, it's a lot of rain. It's hard to find a good day, but we've been out there on good days too, and, and we still can't find them. So we, we realize that some have, have disappeared from uh, habitats, and uh, it's, it's going to be even more critical to find where they are appearing. The two-year survey follows early spring to late summer broods, tracking colonies and habitats for 24 out of the 40 species that are state listed as rare, threatened, or endangered. Maryland's eastern shore hosts some of the state's most diverse habitats. The early spring flutter of more common species, like the gorgeous falcate orange tip, are the surest sign that the butterfly season has begun. Today, Dick surveys the fringe of a pine forest with state zoologist Jim McCann, project coordinator for the DNR. This ancient arid sand ridge is home to eccentric beauties. On the wish list this late April morning, the tiny state endangered frosted elfin, which actually thrives on disturbed habitat. Logging has obliged the frosted elfin here. Ages ago, it was wildfire. It's oriented very well. Yeah. We'll go uh, many years without seeing one, and here we found yeah. a few today. Yeah. You know, we've seen two or three yeah. right here. These subtly marked elfins are so rare that sighting two or three in one day qualifies as unbridled success. This would be uh, an exemplary site for frosted elfins in the mid-Atlantic. Okay, this is the West Virginia white. It's one of the endangered butterflies in Maryland. Its uh, distribution is declining, mainly because of uh, alien uh, weed, garlic mustard. When females lay their eggs on the garlic mustard, instead of the increasingly rare plant seen here, the two-leaf toothwort, the larvae die. As the invasion of garlic mustard progresses, this forest remains one of Maryland's last holdouts for the fragile little West Virginia white. The saga of the West Virginia white reflects the intricacies of the butterfly's life cycle. First, there's the astonishing process of metamorphosis. Here you have uh, something that was just an egg and then it was a little caterpillar that crawled in on a plant to a chrysalis and uh, eventually you, you have something that, that, that is uh, capable of flight, you know, incredible. Metamorphosis is only the beginning. Many butterflies require completely different plants to host the caterpillar and then butterfly nectaring phases. In turn, these plants need their own special habitats. As the summer wears on, concern grows about a rare butterfly of special interest to this region, the Baltimore checkerspot, Maryland's official state insect. The peck skipper. Searching wetlands to the east and west, researchers have yet to find a single Baltimore checker spot in the wild. Meanwhile, a thin succession of more common, usually more abundant butterflies emerges. But most appear weeks late. I just never remember a year any worse 
as far as just seeing numbers of even the common things. The worst butterfly year I've ever experienced. June 24th. Baltimore checker spots are weeks overdue. Dick Smith scours a spot checked less than 24 hours ago. There's evidence of a culprit they've seen before. Deer have browsed the top off the host plant, devouring checker spot larvae and all. And then... It is so difficult to find these things, but when you do, it uh, charges you up. You know, you're ready to go out and uh, uh, try again for another year or two. Uh, By fall, the count is in. In two years, colonies have been documented for only half the 24 species surveyed. Many appeared in disturbingly low numbers, like the giant swallowtail, a childhood icon for many enthusiasts. Yeah, I think swallowtails are the thing that gets uh, most uh, young people interested in butterflies. And here we found a giant swallowtail uh, puddling here with a bunch of uh, male tiger swallowtails. Well, these things are rare all over Maryland. They're uncommon even at this site where they're found. You have to look and look uh, half a day, and finally we find uh, one or two. The disappointing season for butterflies, common and rare, raises as many questions as answers. Something is, is happening in the environment, and uh, the, the uh, decline and disappearance of these butterflies is, is telling us this, and uh, it's important to maintain uh, a watchful eye on, on uh, these little things that are happening from year to year, and take measures to uh, reverse the trend if, if we can. Then, by, by doing these little measures all along the way, we can maintain large segments of wildlife uh, over you know, a, a period of a century or more. I can't imagine a world without these little winged creatures uh, in the spring and summer months.